Hi guys, I'm here with Jair from DLI. I want to talk about the Apex DLI 800 watt fixture. It's an absolutely fantastic fixture, super, super well made. It's a really, really high end fixture using the best LEDs, using the best drivers. I want to pass you over to Jair who's going to explain why this product is so good. I love our Apex. Our Apex is a true high bay light. So this is what you'd have when you have a little bit of ceiling height and you want to run a, a crossover lighting to get the deepest penetration this is what you're using we're selling loads of them in the us right now it's 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 it, it, it's it's a killer so the nice thing on this fixture it's a true 2100 microvolt fixture same output as oh, one, of the, yeah. one of the double edit hpss so also the optics are the same out at the same throw as the hpss so the, this fixture is really easy to uh, actually swap out. So if you want to swap out your double-ended HPS for LED, this is the only true one-to-one -one swap out fixture in the industry right now. So this is like, basically I've been running a thousand watt HPS for, for years, really, really happy with it. Great spectrum, great output. I want to switch to LED. I want to switch to this. Yeah. It's 200 watt less power consumption. It's a better spectrum but you get the same footprint and the same output. Yeah, so you don't have to change everything in yeah. your ceiling. You can use the same hanging points and pretty much take your old fixtures down, put this one up, you're done in an afternoon. And it's a better spectrum of HBS. Uh, well, it's, it's HBS and, 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 and LED are different, but the nice thing is we can tweak LED way better than HBS. So at this moment, I would say, yes, it's a better, it's a better, uh, uh, it's a better uh, spectrum. One of the most important things in every fixture is the, the, the LED diode, the diode itself. Yeah. So the diodes are, are what runs along the Yeah, front. we use the latest generation diodes. Those diodes you can't even get in China, but we can get them in Germany. And we use Osram diodes, but also we just don't use normal Osram diodes. We use the highest bin numbers. For anyone with Osram actually creates diodes, they put all the diodes that they make in a batch and put it through a big machine that flashes every diode and checks every diode on output and on color. And they throw them in a bunch of bins that you have in the bottom of the machine. And now you have a range of qualities from the very best bin to the lowest bin. We use just top bin diodes. So the very best one are only 3% of the total production. And uh, this will give you percent, like many percent of more output. Yeah, so I've, I've, when people do say, oh, we use Osram diodes and blah, 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 they could be using the lesser quality oh, yeah. LEDs. Uh, that oh, and but also older generations. Yeah. You have to understand that if somebody has a, a fixture that's designed seven years ago, he has the generation LEDs in there from seven years ago. And as a customer, if you, you don't buy a new car that was made seven years ago, you want to have the 23 yeah, model. Yeah, so sure. so uh, um, that doesn't make any sense. So we make sure, because we are, uh, like I said, we're not a regular company. Yeah. We make sure that we use the latest generations and the highest bin numbers in this fixture. So we make sure that the best output is there for the customer. If you do normal lighting, like lighting here in the ceiling, it's not that important that three no. or 4% more. But if you make horticultural lighting, you actually make money with the produce that you're you're getting out of your grow room, this is extremely important. So that's probably what not a lot of people know, because I, I didn't know that till today, that literally Osram make multiple LEDs on the same spectrum, and you have maybe 20 different variants of the same LED on the same spectrum, but you have a poor, poorer quality version at this end, and you pick the top 3%. So what goes in here is rare. So it's like, it's a very rare, high powered, top of range, LED light with Osram LEDs. Also, I think what's really nice to see, you can actually see that. So you can see that actually there are, uh, the, you, there's air movement possible around our LEDs. It's not all, all filled out. And we actually have, uh, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. We have little holes drilled in the profiles between the lights. And actually what it does, it actually, you get that it draws in the cool air from the bottom and the, the hot air just goes up to the top and it's called the Venturi effect. And it's a way to where we keep our LEDs way cooler to keep the LEDs as cool as possible is important because it actually gives a better efficiency, but also definitely lifetime. Because I, like I said, every LED that you buy new, even the cheap Chinese ones, 
in the first couple of months are going to be great. But the problem is the drop off, is yeah. what is the degradation of the LED. That's where the difference is between a good LED and, and a cheap LED. This will last five years, maybe even 10 years, depending on what you want. With only 1% degradation per year. Yeah, with only 1% percent degradation yeah. per year. Yeah, and people don't understand that. I think people are buying the cheap LEDs now, but what we don't realize is the degradation they're gonna get in the next, maybe six months, 12 months, because a lot of people are overpowering LEDs. So they look like they're giving a big output, but the degradation on that lap is gonna be massive. Well, you, you have to understand there is a big market of cheap Chinese LEDs. And uh, what we see is uh, things like, let's say an 800 watt LED, but they only put 700 watt diodes in there. And then they overrun the software to actually run it on 800 watts. While the diodes get way too hot, the degradation drops in and just goes like, woo, and it just drops down. And uh, we see a lot of problems. They're, they're, also the cooling, the cooling of the diodes. Sometimes the diodes aren't even attached to the cooling ribs. So and and, really and, and there's like really no cooling going on. Um, you have to understand that you're, even when you buy a cheap version, you're, you, you want it to be lost longer than a year or two yeah. years. You're not buying an LED to last. I mean, then you could better use an HPS. Yeah. Yeah, so an LED needs to last. You're paying you're paying for something that lasts for a long time, that has less energy use and a better spectrum. And I think, like you say, it's great that you offer that kind of professionalism with these kind of LEDs. It's, again, running LEDs cooler, makes them last longer. You're only giving a 1% degradation. HPS needs to be run at a high temperature, so the lamp needs to be running at roughly what temperature we know. It's ridiculous. The, 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 the temperature of a, an arc tube needs to be really high, where the LEDs need to be really low, and they'll last for years, and they won't have that degradation. Also, our, uh, we can use our digital controller on this one. It's, uh, it has a digital protocol, so we're not using the zero to 10 volts anymore. That's old school. We're using a digital protocol, so we make sure that every unit in the room will be exactly dimmed at the same point that you can't, that the digital, new digital control will do. That's fantastic. I, I think, like you say, it's not the cheapest LED, but in my opinion, it's the best. If you're taking HPS out and you want the same or better results, jump on an Apex from DLI.